Okay, ducks. Hey guys, welcome back. So yesterday was the day we, we picked up our feeder calves and we brought them home for the first time. And we, we let them out in the pasture and we've put out some hay and some water for them, but we have not seen them eat from the hay or drink from the water. Now there is a ditch that goes through the pasture and it does hold a little bit of water right now. So I don't know if they've drank out of that ditch or not, but I wanna try to coax the, the steers up toward the hay feeder and where the water trough is. So I'm not really sure if they're bucket trained, but they may be. I'm, so I'm gonna try to get a bucket, put some corn in it, shake that bucket and see if I can get the cows to follow me up that direction. Um, so I know it for sure, they know where to eat the hay and know where to drink the water. So that's what I'm gonna try to do today. First thing is I'm gonna get out in the pasture and see if I can get the cows to follow me. Here, cows. Come on. While I'm waiting on the cows, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to hitch a trailer up to the truck. We're going to drive back across the pond dam, go pick up all that hickory wood that I cut up the other day and uh, get that hauled over to the wood pile. break here for a second so I measured this and this is roughly about a third of a cord of wood that we got from this these two hickory trees so uh, the other day when I cut that hickory tree down I was so proud of myself because I got that back cut and I was able to get it exactly where I wanted it lined up with the front notch and I had several people that commented to me that that was the improper way to do a back cut Several people did say, did say that. Um, some people nicer, nicer than others, of course. And, uh, <laughs> and so I looked it up and, and uh, looked up several different uh, diagrams and, and stuff out there, what the proper way to do it. And when I did what I was supposed to do, my back cut should have been about two inches taller than that front notch, and it would have been a proper hinge. Um, so I was doing that incorrect, and I will try to Make sure I do that the right way next time. But, you know, I never said that I was an expert <laughs> by any means of cutting down firewood or trees or anything like that. I am just a do-it-yourselfer. And that's, to me, that is a really strong part of the whole self-reliance thing. Um, if you want to be, you know, like this homesteading lifestyle and you want to be more self-reliant, that's more than just growing your own food. That's That's doing all the stuff that you can do without having to hire somebody. And, um, you know, so that I, I know I have a lot of times when I do jobs around here, people say, you should have hired that done. Well, that's not the point of what I'm trying to do out here. The point is trying to learn how to do it um, and do it myself. Now, you don't become an expert overnight. You don't become an expert in two years. Um, it's going to take several years before you're really proficient and good at it. But... But the idea is to learn and to do all this stuff, you know, yourself and, and, and have the ability and, and the want to get out there and learn something new and learn how to do it 
and uh, learn to do it well over time. And of course, I'm not there yet, you know, I'm still learning how to cut down trees and stuff like that. I'm, I'll probably never be an expert tree cutter, but I am good enough to cut down the trees that I do cut down. I'm confident enough to at least try to do it. And I can provide my own firewood for me just fine, and I'm happy with that. So the other day I did use that woodcutter's helper to help try to cut these all the same length. And, I mean, nothing's perfect here, but overall, um, they're fairly close. They're all within close to an inch of each other, so I'm pretty happy with the consistency of the firewood uh, length that I have here. If I would have done it just by eyeball, this would have been a lot more up and down, uh, a lot more inconsistent. Now, one of the other things that people pointed out is they really noticed the... Uh, all the knots and imperfections that's inside the wood when it got cut open. And that, that is hickory. Um, that is just the way hickory is. It does have a bunch of, uh, I don't know what to call them. They're not truly knots, but they're these little voids and, and spaces in there. And it makes a very unique wood. Our cabinets in the house are hickory. They're made out of this wood and they make a really good rustic cabinet, especially if your cabinet maker goes to the effort to try to leave all those perfections in the wood. It just, they do make really nice um, rustic cabinets. So uh, I know some people probably thought that I should have turned this into to lumber. Um, you know, if I would have a sawmill or something like that, you know, I might try to cut something up this size for sure, but I, I don't have one here. It's just not a convenient thing to go do. And uh, to me, it'll be just fine for firewood. This is really great wood uh, to be able to cook over. It makes a really good flavor. Uh, when you cook with this wood as well. So this will make real good wood for the fire pit as well. Well, the cows are still just hanging out around that cedar tree. They still haven't really moved much this morning. They came out and grazed first thing this morning and then they've just been sitting around that tree. Well, I guess I'll wait a little bit longer to see if the cows finally move. And if they don't, I'll still go out there and just take a bale of hay out closer to them and just spread it out on the ground for them. But, uh, Right now, um, Rebecca was going to give me a haircut today. I really need a haircut. My hair's getting long. It starts to get curly. Um, so I think I'll go ahead and go inside real quick. Let Rebecca cut my hair so that I look a little more presentable. Well, I ended up going inside to check with Rebecca, and she's making egg noodles right now. So I know some people have asked about that before. So I thought I'd do a little quick film of her making some egg noodles real quick before she cuts my hair. Okay, so I don't measure anything. I just make a huge pile of flour, make um, an indention in the center, a well. I put a bunch of salt in there, um, and then I put a dozen eggs in, and I just add water as needed so it binds together. 
and then I, I cut them into four balls and I let them sit for a little while and then uh, I roll them out flat to the thickness that I want and uh, roll them up into these little pinwheels and just cut them and then they just unroll. As long as I put enough flour in between the layers, they unroll really easy. So when she gets done with this, this whole kitchen counter, I'm going to assume this whole kitchen counter is probably going to be completely covered in egg noodles. Yeah. And then she'll probably just let them sit there for several hours to, to dry. Yeah. And then uh, we have dehydrated them before to dry them, but they get really brittle um, and they take a lot longer to cook. Yeah. But uh, we can pretty much bag these up in plastic bags and, and uh, use them for the next few months or so. The next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if they're good and dry, they'll store for a long time. So while we're in the kitchen, we'll go ahead and look at our hickory cabinets to show you what the hickory looks like when it's finished. You see all those brown spots, those dark spots that look like knots. That That's what shows up in the hickory and it makes really unique uh, looking cabinets, really unique wood. And um, I think all those little knots and imperfections that definitely make a, uh, a rustic looking cabinet, I think it'll look re it looks really good in a cabin. Really like the way these cabinets turned out. Very unique. So yeah, one day if I ever do get, you know, a sawmill, I will, you know, try to cut up hickory into boards so I can use them because they do make very nice looking projects when you're done. So the cows have come back out to do a little grazing and um, they still haven't gone over toward the water. So we're, while Rebecca's making egg noodles, I think I've got um, a fairly decent size um, like tote out here in the garden that I can fill full of water and put it maybe right along this fence line here and see if I can get the cows to at least drink from that. Now as far as them laying around under that cedar tree all day, me and Rebecca were talking and it's probably because they were just banded yesterday, um, banded to, to castrate them. So I guess I'd be wanting to lay around all day too if that happened to me. So that's probably what's going on. But I really do want to see them at least drink something. So let me see if I can get some water put on this side of the pasture and see if they'll drink from it. Whoa, I almost touched the electric wire. So they still don't seem to be too interested in the water. They were just 15 feet away from it. So, you know, cows are right there, the, the water bucket's right here. Um, so that water bucket is getting brittle and it had a crack at the top. Um, so it's not, gonna, it's not gonna take very much before it's completely broken. So I'll probably go back. I, that first water uh, stock tank that we bought was a 100 gallon tank. And really that's a pretty good amount of water to to dump out and then move the tank with the cows um, if I want a mobile one to move around. So I think I'll probably go back, I'll probably try to find like a 50 gallon water tank, something that's easier to dump and easier to move around and fill up uh, as I try to move the cattle, you know, around the pasture and stuff. So uh, probably will pick up a second smaller stock tank to keep out here. And I'll probably keep it on this fence line here. We'll get a little bit longer hose so I can just water it from the garden and water along this fence line and fill it up. I think that'll be, um, give me a little bit more flexibility so I could um, fill up a water tank on this side of the fence. And then I can also fill up a water tank from the hydrant at the barn and I can fill it up along that far side of the pasture with that water hydrant. So give me a little bit of flexibility. So Rebecca's all done. And this is what 12 eggs looks like when you turn those in to egg noodles. So we probably got a total of probably three gallons, three gallon uh, Ziploc bags uh, full of egg noodles from this.
So right there, the cow has got his head down in the ditch and he's drinking water out of the ditch. Can't even see his head. So they are getting water, that's good. At least they're drinking something. So Rebecca just got done cutting my hair and you can see I look totally different now, don't I? I got my spring haircut going. Um, so she's been cutting my hair probably for about 15 years now. And I think a lot of people with this whole COVID thing, I think a lot of people learned how to cut hair this last year. And when she first started cutting my hair, it, it wasn't just perfect right off the bat. I had a lot of bad haircuts at the beginning, I had a lot of crooked haircuts. In fact, one time she forgot to put the guard on the clippers and she ended up giving me like a reverse mohawk up the back of my head. So um, yeah, uh, definitely wasn't perfect at first, but now she's been doing it long enough. She's She's got it all down and she's now She's cut several people's hair in the family, um, not just mine. So um, so the cows, we just seen the one cow drinking out of the ditch, drinking some water. So at least we know they're getting water. That's good. Um, I still want to carry them out a bale of hay. Since they're not coming up to the hay feeder that we built, I still want to take at least one bale out there. I want to spread it on that bare, spot, that bare area on the ground and uh, spread that out for them and see if they'll at least come up and eat some of that hay. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a bale. We'll go do that. So this here is a little cart that's Rebecca's. It's uh, so she can uh, haul the hay bales around without having to manhandle them. But uh, it does make it fairly easy. So I think I'll go ahead and use it myself. So you can see this area right here, is, there's really nothing growing right here. So put this hay on there. The cows will eat some of it maybe and they'll trample the rest in. At least it'll cover up the dirt. There's probably some seeds mixed up in this hay anyway. Might help reseed it as well. Greg Judy, if you watch Greg Judy's channel, of course he don't use square bales, but he uses a lot of round bales and he says you know letting the cows eat off the ground all that wasted hay is helping helping the you know the dirt in the soil helping cover it up helping reseed it so I don't know we'll give it a shot hopefully the cows will come over here and eat some of this if they don't I'll have to spread it out even more and make it thinner like about a half a bale is going to do it. See what it looks like in another day or so. See if we can tell if the cows have ate it or if they've trampled any in. So I'm going to take the rest of this bale and just put it in their hay feeder and we'll see if they come over here and start eating this hay. Well, it seems like I have wasted most of my day so far waiting for the cows to do something. And uh, right now we are waiting for them to see if they eat that hay that we just laid out there. So uh, while we're waiting for that, I think I'm gonna go in the basement. I'm gonna grab the seedlings that we planted a couple weeks ago and we'll check on them, see how they're doing. So these two trays right here are the cauliflower. And this one is the amazing cauliflower from Baker Creek. And that all germinated well. And this is, uh, Snowball X cauliflower. I just bought this at the local store and it germinated as well, too So what I'm going to do with these cauliflower today is I only want one plant per uh, Pot so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the smallest plants that are in there And I'm gonna pluck those off so that there's only one plant per pot leave the biggest plant in there So this here is the cabbage that we planted and it is early golden acre. Found this at the local store as well. And that, that is the same variety that Living Traditions Homestead plants. And since this was our first time planting cabbage, I decided to give it a try. I'm gonna do the same thing with the cabbage. I'm gonna pull the small ones out and leave only the biggest one in the pot. 
So back here is our onions. They are just starting to pop through the surface. Well, while I was waiting for the cows, I went ahead and uh, planted some more seeds. So I filled the rest of this tray up with uh, lettuce and then I filled that tray up with broccoli. So the cows still haven't ate the hay that I laid out in the pasture for them. Um, but they did move closer to the livestock barn and they're under the cedar tree that's closest to that side. So they're moving around a little bit, but uh, I sure can't get them interested in anything I'm doing, that's for sure. Well, the cows are going to do whatever they want to do, I guess. They're not going to eat the hay that I'm trying to get them to eat, but at least they're out in the pasture grazing. And I still need to get a few things. I need to get some kind of a protein supplement, like a protein tub, and then I need to get some minerals out there. Um, minerals, loose minerals, mineral block. I need to get something for the cows as well. And, um, you know, I'm going to let them sit out here in pasture for probably, uh, you know, probably at least a week or so before I attempt any type of rotational grazing or anything to try to put up any temporary fencing. Um, just want to let them get used to the place and uh, I think they're a little bit sore right now anyway from being banded yesterday. So, <laughs> so I'll give them a little bit of a break. Um, so today I've been trying to take things easy on Sunday. This is a Sunday so I've been trying to not do too much work and be a little more of a relaxing day for me. And I think what I'm going to do now to finish up my day is I think I'm gonna go out here and I think I'm gonna get the fishing poles out and try to do a little bit of fishing tonight before it gets uh, too late. Um, it's just a beautiful day and as I walk by the pond you can see tons of movement in the water of like fish moving around so I think the fish are liking the warm weather as well so hopefully I can get out here and catch a few. So I think that's it for today's video guys so thanks for watching. I'll catch you later. Oh, I got one. Look at that. Second cast. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Second cast. I got me a decent one right there. Um, I'm going to say he's supper. Um, I am really uh, a fan of fish tacos. So I'd say I'm having a little bit of fish tacos tonight. Let me take him over and put him in something. As soon as I hit the water, you could see all the fish move. Oh, oh, oh. And we got another one. That's the third cast. Come here. Definitely going to be a good night for fishing. I may be able to catch food for the week. Yep. Yep. There we go. Another decent little one. Good eating bass right there. Well, he got something out of it, the deal. He ate the tail off of my jig. That's a pretty common occurrence, actually. We have to replace these quite often. But man, the bass, at least the bass here like them pretty good. So I've been out here fishing for about 15 minutes now, and I've caught three bass so far. And I look over, and uh, both of the cows were out here eating the hay the hay that I spread out in the pasture earlier. So at least I know they know where it is and they've eaten some of it. So I think, I think they're just being stubborn. I think cows are gonna work on their own schedule and uh, I don't think I'm gonna be able to change that. So at least they, I know they got some hay in their belly today. Oh, 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 come on, reel him in. <laughs> Caught me by surprise. All right, fish number four. Look at that, man, I think I'm going to have enough meals for a couple days. Oh yeah, what I get now, come on, got another one. This one's a little bit smaller, 
but I can pull these things out all day it seems like. This is fish number five right there. A little bit smaller. Oh, yes, I got another one. Oh, come here. Come on. There we go. Number six. <laughs> Splashing these water. All right. I think that's it for today then. I think uh, I think six ought to do it. To me, that's like, uh, it's like six fish tacos. That's way more than I can eat. So I'd say I definitely got meals for the next few days. So now I just need to get these filleted up, fry some up for tonight. So there you go. That made a pretty decent amount of fish fillets. I think I'm gonna eat about four of these tonight and I'll save the rest for tomorrow. Cut our fish up into little nuggets. That's the way I like to fry them up. Little bite-sized pieces. Mm -hmm.